So I'm here with Phil Schumann, and basically today uh, we want to discuss a project that Phil has been working on. Um, I, I believe it's pronounced Zui. Is that how you pronounce it, Phil? Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, just I want to hand over to Phil to give a, an introduction, but basically um, I'm interested in this project because I've been looking for something for a project I've been working on. Um, I, I basically built a static site generator called Plenty, and Plenty is a Go-based project that leverages the Svelte compiler to build, you know, interactive UIs on the front end. Um, I, so I have been basically looking for a solution to do that compilation without needing a, a JavaScript ecosystem, like a Node.js project set up to do it. Um, and the, the solution that we had settled upon, you know, over the last few years that we've been working on it is essentially using like a V8 environment. There's a project called V8 Go to basically pull in the Node project and compile JavaScript. Um, that you know it has worked, but there are, it comes with some downsides to it as well in terms of performance and um, you know uh, basically stability of of that build mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been looking for someone who is interested in essentially um, something similar to me is is like could this compilation process happen and go? Yeah. And, and through um, I was actually uh, I found your project through another project. Um, uh, called parse. Um, essentially, it's doing some some JavaScript parsing, and it looks like you had some things that were related to uh, some co things that I was trying to solve on my end. And then I found your project Zui uh, mm -hmm. and found your examples. Uh, and it seems like you're just like decently far along um, with 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 building some of the DOM targeted yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, com compilation targets. So I, I don't know. It seemed very interesting. I don't know. You know exactly what your vision is for the project, like where you're at and, and, um, you know, some of your background. So I'm just curious to like meet with you. This is the first time we've ever talked and, um, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, so yeah, do you want to tell, tell me a little about yourself and, and, you know, yeah, sure. to this project? I mean, uh, uh, certainly the, the quick, uh, rundown on me is I've been coding since, uh, 98 and I got into go in 2011. And uh, was pretty into it because uh, I was sort of suffering from C sharp and dot net, mm -hmm. uh, which was all sorts of enterprise up, right? So, and uh, Go was a nice memory of uh, Pascal and my school days. And so I really uh, kind of fell in love with that um, back then. Yeah. And uh, basically, as far as Zui goes, so it's it has a context where basically I was uh, aiming to do my own SAS uh, businesses based on my own Go web stack, uh, which is sort of homegrown and can basically run any, uh, I can write apps on that. So um, they reuse the same underlying thing. Maybe I can sort of, I can sort of think quicker when I share my screen, I think. Sure. And go, go through stuff here. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, just got to find that. So so you're building like a, like a SaaS business. Is that kind of... And, and you needed some way to build UIs for your framework. Is that? Well, that's kind of uh, the origin story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let me uh, let me get back into that because right now I'm kind of out of that. Uh -huh. Like I said, it's been a, a month and I got distracted into sort of leaving Go uh, as my underlying foundation, maybe. Okay. And uh, looking into Lisp again after so many years not doing that. Oh, okay. Because um, I was sort of out of nostalgia. I was rereading the old Paul Graham articles on uh, the magic of Lisp and the powers of Lisp. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, and uh, I felt with Zui as well uh, that I coded myself into a corner and it got all sorts of um, clunky. Mm, okay. And it didn't feel so smooth and fluid. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Mm hmm. So anyway, to to go back to Zui. So basically, I uh, is it too bright for you if I make light mode on? Because here it's really bright right now. So oh yeah, that's that's totally fine. All right. So, all right. Uh, so if we look, oh, if we look at this all together, mm -hmm. I have basically this sort of fr underlying framework, right, for for what development with APIs and everything, backend stack, basically DB stuff, okay. all to my taste. I did this actually last winter. And then I had a sort of a demo apps, uh, like a chat app and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and but that was sort of um, 
the front end was not the final story because back then I used something called Van okay. JS. I'm getting really uh really sort of chatty. So if your time is uh no 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 please yeah no this is super yeah. interesting. I, I've never heard of Van JS so oh man what is this I'm doing here? <laughs> nope. I don't usually yeah, use I I have you using a different browser just for for context for people watching this because uh, we're we're on Jitsi uh, Meet and it, the browser Phil normally uses wasn't working so he did a yeah yeah so this is, uh, this used to be my business project browser for freelancing projects so okay. it's kind of separate from my private stuff okay have my bookmarks are project stuff from the last clients and stuff mm -hmm. uh, all right so yeah I, I used this which is basically uh, sort of super minimalist uh, reactive JavaScript, but mm -hmm. it's really tiny and minimalist. And so I did want a better UI story because you're still sort of constructing all these DOM elements. Uh, it's kind of a little bit like jQuery and just doing it in JavaScript purely. Okay. Um, so that wasn't cool. And uh, I've, I just felt Svelte is basically the nicest approach because you have these component styles, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have this sort of, I mean, they they, they are usually sweaty files, right? And then you have some uh, markup and some script together in one file, and you, you basically have this whole web, web components idea, which they did in this style even before it was such a big thing, I guess. I don't know if it became a big thing, actually. Mm -hmm. but, but I like it, right? So the, the whole approach is nice. And um, what I wanted is first that this compiles to actual web components, uh -huh. like JavaScript. Uh, compiled JavaScript would basically be a web component that you can sort of load up normally. And, uh, and also, I didn't want the whole um, Svelte uh, framework as a dependency. Yep. Because uh, you know how it goes when you're coding, you're kind of thinking, hey, this shouldn't be too hard. Uh -huh. Why do I need all this node stuff and all whatever the dependencies they might depend on? And who knows when they start bit rotting? Yep. And then you have to upgrade, and all of a sudden that fails because <laughs> NPM or Yarn or something. But and, uh, yeah, so I was kind of hooked on the idea to sort of get the seemingly simple stuff uh, compiling into JavaScript files that are maximally compact uh, and uh, just lean. So here we are in line. Mm -hmm. Seems to work better, but OK. So if you take this, for example, button on click mm -hmm. uh, with a script, right? And um, compiles into this, yep. which is probably totally different from the JS that, oh, man, touchpad sucks. Mm. From the, the JS that's what he generates, but uh, it's been working really. And uh, yeah, as far as I can tell, there's only one sort of shared script because if you have this for every little button component in there, that would be kind of wasteful. So there is some sort of, uh, I tried to avoid this, but in the end, I had this. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's a pretty small one though. Where is it? It's got to be somewhere here. Um, so yes, yeah. yeah, I looked at it, the script at one point. I can let me see if I can find on my end. Um, oh, because I'm hiding JS files, that's why. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> which I should do, I guess. For this kind of project. Mm. Yeah, so so you're basically you're trying to build like the the developer interface to be exactly like Svelte, but the output is is custom Zooey like output. It's not you're not trying to be one for one in the compile step. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That makes sense. Um, because I had no interest really in in, in what they generate is yeah. Except if I wanted to make this my main project and was interested in their own optimization steps if they have any yeah but anyway i mean i generate code um it's kind of like string construction really i don't even use the ast library mm. for constructing um mm -hmm. that stuff because i think it would be just really wordy but even so i mean i'm not saying this is a perfectly done go or perfectly architected or designed go project it was really ad hoc 
starting out pretty uh one thing after another and then mm -hmm. <laughs> it gets a little overwhelming after all in the end and one tricky thing here really is that i'm not properly parsing these files as uh, such um, for example i mean i don't really have uh swelty parsing i have a html parsing and, mm -hmm. and for these things alone uh -huh. i'm kind of really mangling the strings before i do the html parsing right so mm -hmm. if you have uh, if you have any sort of thing like this where there's any white space in there or even a mm -hmm. quote or anything that sort of ends or disrupts uh, the attribute then it would pass like this yep. uh, you know yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. and and so i'm i'm sort of trying to catch all this with string handling uh -huh. just so i don't have to write a, a sweaty parser yep <laughs> so string handle um, is that like a, like regex or where how like what's the string handling look like uh, it's even manually i mean uh, basically regex would be smoother that would be the better way to uh, -huh. uh to do it and but uh, the thing is that i started with a real simple case because i went through these examples right from the simplest yeah they, they have this on, on their website mm -hmm. right uh, or does it even? yeah i was impressed with how many examples you you covered i mean there's I was going through and you, you've hit like a lot of the major API stuff from what I could tell. Yeah. I mean, I, I went through them until I ran out of steam really. Yep. <laughs> this, this is basically the one that has this kind of command comment and all the others are fine, mm -hmm. but here I was getting into the special casing stuff yep. um, where I really lost my taste for all of this. At the same time, I was getting back into this whole uh, Lisp and scheme sure option uh-huh so what was the look at the oh yeah so they handled especially with a with the option value and yeah i mean of course these kind of projects i think they're full of special casings in the end to make this a really good dev experience so, sure but i was really getting out of that at that point yeah yeah that makes <laughs> sense i mean there's so many competing things to spend your time on. It's always hard to <laughs> figure out where to where to put the time. So I understand that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm still sort of on this whole uh, web app stuff, but I really want to switch. I think out of Go. Yep. So as long as I can afford it, and right now it looks like I still can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I totally get that. Um, so that's that's super interesting so so you're building this framework out um obviously there were some things like like uh some of the string parsing makes it so it's a, maybe you have to be a little bit more careful with the syntax on the front end than like svelte would be for instance right that's what it sounds like um hmm. you were basically com uh compiling at the moment for just like the dom targets right like the 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 front end js stuff and not actually thinking about like the ssr targets at all Do, is that so side rendering yeah, so there's like um so Svelte has like basically yeah, you can server side render or you can like do their they call it a DOM target or an SSR target. Uh -huh. And from from their server side rendered target, it's basically like a template string, a JavaScript template string. Mm -hmm. and you, you could render HTML from that target. Um no but, but you're not actually you're just only worried about the front end interactive aspect. You're not actually rendering HTML. Yeah. So basically uh Unlike a static site generator, where usually you generate real pages to read um, mostly, right? And uh, and many many users are bloggers and stuff. Uh -huh. So for this, my use case really was um, I was actually looking to avoid DOM UIs, and I was looking at Flutter, and I was looking at uh, Qt, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff that you really can build out from one single code base clients for desktop and uh, mobile and also the browser but it was just so too sucky in the browser about what they make nowadays with yep. Flutter and qt and could be different in a couple of years but um at this point i said okay let's make it dominate let's make it uh just sort of really carefully efficient maybe like a vs code team manages mm -hmm. because i mean javascript i don't know how they do it but they make it real sort of real fast and uh, vs code it's, uh, most electron apps aren't like that right so that's why i 
switch to this thing. But uh, so that meant uh, server-side rendering was not interesting here. Yep. Also because Go has, of course, its own template in library and there's all kinds of other ones that are super mature probably. Oh, uh, I don't know if you know this one. Uh, I just got to sort of work out the search here. Okay, we can do it here. Mm -hmm. Temple. Oh, oh Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, we've been using that. on uh, My team's been using that a little bit on a project that we're building. Um, yeah, yeah, it's great. We can carry on. Sorry for the, the delay there. No problem. Um, you were, you're talking about Temple for a second, I think. Yeah, we were. That's what we were. And now I'm seeing some. All right. So that's that. Um, yeah, I was just, we were just talking about uh, server side rendering, right? And I mm -hmm. just told uh, why it wasn't so interesting for me here. Yep. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess the generation, code generation would just be a lot simpler. Although it depends. I mean, kind of, you have a lot of script logic. Would you want to run that on the server in Node.js? And then wiring up the, like, for example, this kind of stuff, right? On the form submit. It's kind of what they used to do with the uh, form post back in uh, ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. If you ever played with that, where mm -hmm. basically, um, I think you, you basically had a C-sharp method. Um, and then you could say on submit is like, uh, is, is, I don't even know what the syntax was. But anyway, yeah. no, I think you could just wire it up. There, there was some sort of, they called it code behind, which is basically for the sort of the page, a C sharp file. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you could handle these events on the server and everything from a click to a submit, you could sort of turn into some sort of post back. But I'm not sure you would want to go this way nowadays. Mm. No. What, what, what would you What would you do instead? I mean, I just wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Server side rendering, right? There's this kind of yeah. interaction, unless you really just have some sort of contact form. Um, I don't know to collect an email address. Okay, for that you can sort of do a post yeah. and and have a server script. Yeah. To to pass that form. But otherwise, for these saw really higher interactive applications, I'm thinking really it's script based. And uh, like I said, I mean, static site generator, usually it's a block or, or similar page use cases, really, mm -hmm. with very simple forms, right? Uh, if any. Yeah. And, and not, not all this interaction with JavaScript plays, unless they're actually standalone, like, I don't know what, like some game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, and I think they're like for, you know, for the static site generation side with felt, I think that the idea was, you know, produce HTML. So you get that, that fast initial page load and like, it wouldn't actually handle mm -hmm. any of the form submission stuff. And then once you hydrate it with the interactive JavaScript, then you can do all sorts of things with it. Right. So that, I think that was kind of the play there, but yeah, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, yeah. I used to do, uh, I did one years ago in Haskell, which is, um, it's just kind of funny because I, I, I also embedded my template language for that. Mm -hmm. So I could have basically um, controls for navigation and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Define uh, and, and, and just one control file, component file, and then render it all together. So I have some sort of um, real funky. Oh. oh, yeah, here, that was the syntax. Okay. So that's kind of like that. Uh -huh. So I've been there, done that, actually. Um, but back then, I had this whole other, uh, I wanted this, uh, I mean, this is like eight years ago. So I was still in the early 2000s design style where you want uh, uh, not just a page to read, but all sorts of uh, design elements and like sidebars and, and quotation things. And I don't know what. Yeah. So... So right now, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. Actually, it's good to have an aesthetic site generator. So yeah, sure. Um, awesome. So so I guess like in terms of where the project is today, what like what do you think? Um, like where do you think it is from your initial vision of it? 
if you had to like chart that out from like zero to a hundred percent, like where do you think it is? And what do you think the biggest missing pieces are for, for where it stands? Mm -hmm. So if I stay on, on my go stack rather than rewrite it all in, in my, uh, newly chosen stack, yeah. then, uh, this would definitely have to be sort of re rewritten, I think, from scratch uh, with a proper parser. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, by now I got into this. Um, it's called Antler. It's like it's oh, yeah. like Yuck parser generator, mm -hmm. because the thing is, there's already JavaScript parsings, uh, parsers, and, and HTML parsers, so you don't need to reinvent them, but you sort of need to merge them for this mm -hmm. and uh, handle them basically by uh, probably by lexing. So that means regular expressions, I guess, or something similar mm -hmm. um, that you actually handle these cases in a cleaner manner than my string processing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is probably what I would approach it with. So and uh, this has some sort of go back end nowadays and i'm hearing the code is not too pretty that's being generated but it's a parser generator and uh yeah right now i use the um, existing html parser and the goldline standard library and this no this past project that you mentioned right that's why you found me um yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so that that's actually pretty cool right it's javascript parsing and it seems to really work Mm -hmm. which is uh pretty insane yeah, I know. <laughs> well quite the achievement and html in there as well so that's really cool yep. um but still for this yeah i would probably go for something where you have, get a clean pass of the swelty syntax without needing to sort of extract and and reformulate um, certain special cases in string handling that'd be one thing and then, yeah, I mean, definitely the whole feature set is not yet there, I think. I mean, as far as the examples go, I don't know where I stopped. They don't number them, really. Yeah. So you're but, just kind of going top down on the examples page. That's how you were. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Actually, uh, they have another one in the docs. I think I used that tutorial, but they're mostly the same. Um, so a little smoother to navigate. Basically, this is really well done. I mean, they have the whole feature surface basically covered by this. So if you implement all the examples here and get them working, um, then you're basically compatible mm -hmm. with all the syntax factors. Um, I don't know where I was um, where I was leaving this. So insecurity questions, so what it was, maybe? Ah, oh, they don't have that hmm. indexed, but it's somewhere in here. Okay. <laughs> um, I must be here, must be here, actually. Yeah, that's the one. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, so, so it's okay, basically... So that's basically it, where you it, left it, off there. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So anyone wants to take this further or adopt it and, and take it from there yeah. or me in the future. And uh, if I give up on this and go back on go, yeah. Um, then yeah, I'll move on from here, I guess. Okay. And yeah, I don't need some refactoring. Here's all the string handling stuff. I think let's see what we got. See all the stuff, mm -hmm. angle bracket center open string replacers. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh yeah, I, I I think I inject temporarily some uh, some random phrase. It's um, <laughs> that's uh, called a sentinel to later be replaced back or something. You know, this kind of string handling. So that's why you want a proper parser. Gotcha. Um, this gets insane. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so so at this point, I mean, it seems like you're, you're pretty set on, you know, kind of switching your, your framework language and, and that kind of stuff. Um, do, do you, is this project pretty much off your radar at this point, or do you expect that maybe there's a chance you go back to it or are you looking to kind of pass the torch to somebody? What, like, what's your hope for it? Well, it could just be that I'm getting burnt out on the other stuff. Um, <laughs> right now I'm still honeymooning. Yeah, yeah. And it feels so much smoother and stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, um, there's a problem with the, all the lists that you have the slow build times. Yeah. 
and the one i chose does not right now have something like go run you know mm -hmm. so it's like um slowing things down so that um, maybe i go back to go at some point in some sort of this is mature this is complete this is full of libraries and it builds fast yeah. and then i would pick up on that but it's uh, hard to tell right now yeah um so i i don't think you're i don't think the project has a, like a license file on it right now like no. are, are you um is that something that you would be willing to add like so people could like take a look at it extending it and, and continuing on with the work there and then at some point if you choose to merge back in we could sure i mean yeah i never put this in there because i usually uh i wait until someone asks right oh yeah yeah of course yeah. <laughs> um what is it about this there was this public license is this a proper one or is this actually oh yeah looks like it probably i put this there. <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's anyway using a third party dependencies, at least for the parsing. Let's see what we got in here. Mm. Oh, just that. Yeah. So that's pretty lean. Mm -hmm. uh, I got burned on too many bit rotted abandoned layer dependencies. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this one, of course, that's a major one. It's a biggie. Yeah. And yeah, it's he, really good, right? He does a good job of, yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty active. Um, yeah. Because he's using it for, he has his own, um, like a, a very popular minification uh project that that I think ah, uses yeah. these parses yeah all right yeah i was gonna i was one, kind of wondering what was he doing that he wrote all this yeah i'm pretty sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure he uses it for his minifiers uh which is mm. which are pretty popular um yeah but yeah su super nice guy from the chats i've i've done with him on just like yeah the issue queue but yeah yeah so good stuff for sure yeah so i guess i can put this on cool yeah i mean so I know I've talked with people um, that are interested in this space in the past. Um, I don't know where they're at today because, you, you know, exactly like, like you're talking about, sometimes we get caught up with different things or work gets busy yeah. or we have different interests. So I don't know what level of interest these folks are at these days, but I'm happy to, as long as it's, this is something that you want to share with folks and, you know, has a license that's sure. permissible, then I, I'd, I'd be happy to loop in with them and, and get it out there. I mean, we're making this video that I'm going to post. So like at the very least, we're getting it to the world that way. Um, but yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a cool starting point. You've done, you've done a, a fair amount of work. It looks like on it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's something that, that definitely piqued my interest because of, uh, n nobody was really solving this in the way that I was ho hoping. And it seemed like you were making a good dent in it. So. Yeah, sure. Um, actually we never did a live play here. Maybe, uh, I'll just try if it still works. Sure remembering that people are watching this oh yeah <laughs> um so this, not this one i was kind of doing it stupidly always adjusting the number here oh yeah, yeah sure mm, nothing dynamic like that but yeah, should I... even work locally does it not was i running this on a server i don't think i did yeah, I remember I pulled down the project and in the very least I ran your all all compile script to like compile all the components and they all compiled. I haven't tested that, you know, that they work or anything like that, but they, they compile, which is cool. I am. Uh, I better had. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I really don't, don't recall. Okay, yeah, it's that. So basically, I must have been running some local host. Mm. Like a local server or something. I, I don't recall how I did that back then. It's hmm. only been a month. I mean, this is goldfish memory. Not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. It could be yesterday. It's it's gone. Um, yeah. So yeah, basically, you were compiling and then you were you're pulling the 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 JS file into the browser so you could test it out. Is that yeah, I was basically just a fiving, right? Mm -hmm. Switching back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Do I have some local host serving app? I remember I wrote one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so yeah. this is for the user to figure out, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So whoever wants to 
contribute and carry on, then we could put a little web server in there so we can test easier maybe. Right. Um, okay, very cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I guess like, I mean, at this point, it's just, uh, it, it looks like um, this is for someone else to, to, to possibly start playing with. And then do you want to be like looped in with that stuff? Or is, is there anything that, that you would want that would help like motivate you? Like, do you want promotion on this or, or funding for it? Or like, what, what, what gets you excited about this? I don't know, man. Uh, I guess, I mean, if someone's doing it to themselves to go through all the stuff, they can certainly just uh, get in touch for questions or anything. Okay. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, wait, this is, <laughs> all right. Uh, bit oddly formatted but i guess it made sense for some reason oh yeah okay handling the each different than the await all right sorry i'm gotten lost in, in code i don't know um yeah so basically um this is not my my big project right so this is something that i wanted to have as a building block and if i stick on lisp i rewrite this in lisp and if i go back to go i pick it up again and if things uh, if people go uh, want to go with this somewhere else for their own purposes. That's cool. That's why it's all on GitHub. Yeah. And always get in touch if you see a promising need for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very, <laughs> very cool. I appreciate you you talking to me and walking through some of this stuff. I, like, um, I'm definitely going to, I'm I'm interested. So I'll, I'm going to take a closer look, um, maybe talk with some other folks. Uh, it sounds like you're open to people contributing or, or carrying on or whatever. So I'll, I'll talk to some folks, see where they're at with that and see if there's any interest in other people working on it or looking at it. And, uh, you know, well, what is that project? project? I want to check it out. The static side gen or what? M mine is, yeah, it's called plenty co. You could probably, so P yeah. Plenty uh, what? Uh, with an I instead of a Y and then C O. And that should bring it up. If you Google that, I would think. Um, yeah. So that, that's a website and the uh -huh. hub. So yeah. So it's just, yeah. All right. Um, the GitHub's right there, but yeah, it's just at this point, it's all, all done in V8. I mean, at some point it'd be cool to maybe think about it, um, it, it more of a native compiler mm. like, like you're building. So I don't know, but we'll see. This looks more really good, oh. especially this is this kind of edit right on the page. Yeah. That, so that's actually, that's so you, there's a CMS, but the editing on the page actually still is still a thing that's not really that I got to change the website. That's been, been meaning to update that for a while. So yeah. Um, so that's kind of, that's a little bit of a lie, I guess. Um, there is a, there is a CMS that kind of pulls out as like a tray that allows you to change things directly on the page. But in, mm -hmm. in for a hot second, we did have on page editing, but I removed it because it was, there's other complications with it. So, um, all right, man, you got to use this. That's good. <laughs> yeah. we got a couple. Yeah. There's people. Interested. Nice. Um, I still think there's a long way to go to get it to where I'd want it to ultimately be, but you know, it's a starting point and it's, um, we're, we're using it on our team. So that's nice. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, I think a, a real native compiler that, that works consistently and fast would be a huge, huge thing for us. So that's yeah, cool. um, I mean, I don't know if, you, if you're some kind of company, but I mean, right now I'm looking for freelance uh, uh, endeavors. So that's, um, okay. so that's maybe, something where, where I have not abandoned go. So it uh, might be uh, something to uh, ponder and discuss internally. Maybe, yeah, maybe you and I can uh, connect on that. And yeah, like I said, uh, it really need this kind of thing that I did as a proof of thing, a proof of concept and uh, prototype. It really needs stabilization and uh, some restructuring and uh, better parsing yeah. before one goes further with this uh, to complete the feature surface. Yep. And yeah, I mean, of course, you also have your, your, your static site rendering uh, needs so that's uh, of course not covered yep but anyway yeah good stuff yeah so so yeah i mean well we'll connect off the recording maybe we can talk about that at some point too um yeah. but yeah well this is great um should i should i kill our recording at this point is there anything else you wanted to say about the project or, or any, anything you're working on now right now it's sort of um uh, it's still exploratory yeah. <laughs> that's all right nothing further to say i guess awesome well um so yeah so um did you want to put did you pull up the link to to zooey on here just so, in case, so it's on the video um where would they find the the code for the project yeah so it's um 
basically this. Yep, and that'll leap. Okay, and then forward slash Zui, Z-U-I. Cool. So, yeah, that's a, that's where the project is for people who are watching this, if anyone's watching and, and who are interested. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, and feel free to, to reach out to me if, if anyone's interested and I can always connect you with Phil or, or, or whatever, or reach out to Phil. I think you can find him on his GitHub there. Um, sure and, thing. And hopefully we'll jump up some people who are interested and, and we'll see where, where we can take it. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. Cool. I guess I put some readme in here as well. Nice. Uh, yeah. Just I mean, to summarize the status, uh, just in case. Yeah. yeah, that that's always helpful. Yeah, like a little readme, um, the license too would be great, and then I think that that's a good foundation for further exploration. So yeah. Um, yep. Cool. Um, all right. Well, I'll I'll kill the recording now. Uh, okay. Let me see. Bye bye. All right. Uh,